Good morning. It's Good Friday, April 7th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, It Is Finished, recorded live at Central United Methodist Church in Denton, North Carolina, during Lenten midday services. Our guest soloist is Jennifer Klim, singing, The Day He Wore My Crown.
Let me invite you to join in as we read the scripture this morning. John chapter 19, verses 23 through 30. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said, rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture that said they divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here's your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I'm thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. I don't know if you ever knew this, but sometimes preachers study a Bible text with the wrong lens. Guilty as charged. We dryly pick apart the words, the tenses, the, the context and the usage of the language, but Language without pathos and intelligence without feeling will always claim correctness. And indeed, there is an accuracy of linguistics to be claimed. But that kind of dry toast analysis, correct as it might be, will miss the humanity and the grit of what is most important. When we consider this text, we need to remember that Jesus did not die in a vacuum. This cross is not a picture to be painted. It's not a piece of jewelry to be hung around a neck. The passion of the Christ is blood. And it's the word of God made flesh, pierced because of our sins. It's pain born of forgiveness. You know it's impossible to forgive without pain. Have you ever forgiven somebody? It costs something, doesn't it? Contemplating what happened on the cross always brings me to the point of tears because that was my place. He took my place. It was the day, as we just heard, he wore my crown. There are technical words that we use for that, like substitutionary atonement. I bet you said that over breakfast this morning, didn't you? Words like substitutionary atonement, many more words. They're used all the time in seminaries where ethereal-minded discussions take place to define the events and the meaning of Christ's sacrifice, but listen, none of it captures the pathos of excruciating pain, both physical and metaphysical, both flesh and spirit. Uh, Only God, speaking from the cross, gave the full understanding of what it meant to forgive when he said, it is finished. Scripture declares Jesus was the sacrificial lamb of God. That plan was known and it was inevitable from before the foundation of the world. God had always known this and God chose to do this 
to become our sacrifice, even before Adam had taken his first breath. God knew it would happen this way. And the words, it is finished, mean that the grisly reality that every part of God's plan to make our redemption, that reality was accomplished in that moment. It is finished. It's three words in our language. It's only one word in the Greek text. Tetelestai is the Greek word. What does it mean? Its meaning here is anything but dry theological mumbo jumbo. That's a technical phrase, right? Tetelestai. What does it mean? It means paid in full. Aren't those the sweetest words in the English language, especially where your car alone is concerned? Paid in full. They stamp it on the documents that are recorded at the courthouse. Your house, mortgage, paid in full. That's what Jesus said from the cross. We hear it's finished. Oh, the service is finished, it's over. Oh, that song is over. I, I really liked it or I didn't like it. To tell us I paid in full. When Jesus uttered that final word before groaningly commending his spirit to the Father's keeping, he took every bit of the agony that he suffered and he gave it all for the release of the penalty of our sin. Jesus, as the song says, paid it all. That was what he finished, completed. That's what he signed in blood on the cross, a debt that we could never pay. But while his high priestly work here on earth was finished, there was something else that was just getting started. The gift of eternal life, which he had promised would be ours if we will but deny sin, deny self, take up the cross, and follow him. Good Friday is coming up in a few weeks, and we're going to take the Savior down from Calvary's tree. We're going to put him in Arimathea's tomb, and it's going to be sealed, and it's going to be guarded by the soldiers. You know the story. And what happens when we do that? We sit with the disciples of the first century, and we sit in darkness until the promise of resurrection three days later. And all we have left to ponder, as they did in the darkness, is the cross, the blood, the pain, the emptiness of a broken body. There's quietness and just one cold question. What now? What now? And we wait. And we will know the cross wasn't the last time Jesus finished his promised work. Because the culmination of God's plan of redeeming our sin-sick souls will be celebrated in time yet to come. We will, even then, hear and know the final finishing word to tell us die. It's recorded in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 16, where it says that Jesus told the beloved apostle, it is finished. John would have recognized that word he heard it standing there next to Mary at the cross to tell us die. Finished. Jesus said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the church be quiet and wait for the Savior who paid it all.